I hate TikTok for a lot of reasons, because of the aggressive algorithm, the stupid challengers, the sanity dive attacks, and above all for popularizing the worst aspect ratio known to man. And frankly, if you told me that a couple of months ago, I would be like, bro, I don't give a rat's ass about some dingy rectangles. I got Skibbity Toilet 694 to watch, and it's fire in 9x16. So why do I care? Well, aside from it missing up nearly every shot and resulting in continental plate sized black bars in landscape, these stupid squares matter. And way more than you'd think. See, these rectangles subconsciously influence the way you act and think. You don't just see them in videos or movies, no. It's something you interact with right now. Your screen and everything you see in it and will ever see on it, comics, manga, art, apps, websites and text, all of these are created with aspect ratios in mind. What's more, creative uses of it can often result in some of the most incredible and awe-inspiring works of art. Or they can also make this. And we won't hate this. Let's learn how to not make this. Aspect ratio is a concept as complex as water's flavor profile. It's just the ratio between width and height of a rectangle frame into which the media is squeezed. And I've graduated from Twitter college to know what a ratio means. There are dozens of set aspect ratios in film and many of us understand their intended effect. Like how 21 by 9 makes everything more epic and tense, or 4 by 3 makes everything a little more cozy and old school, and 9 by 16 makes it easier to watch Joe Rogan with subway surface clips. But the thing is, you can't just decide on that aspect ratio based on just one cool scene. Because here's where it gets interesting. Just like drawings were essentially the prehistoric TikToks, movies and manga have way more in common than it might seem. Okay, I say manga, but I also mean comics and manhwa and manhwa and webtoons, but I just... can we just call it manga, please? The size of a paper always limits what you can show in it, so it's up to the artist to break up the page in a way that visually conveys as much of the story as possible. Think about it, each panel is our window into the characters' worlds, like a frame in a movie. There is real cinematographic thought behind how panels are composed and how artwork is arranged within them. But there is a hidden complexity. Just like a frame in a movie wouldn't dictate its aspect ratio, you can't decide a panel's size based on just one scene either. Because once you lock in a panel's size, you're also introducing next space, not just in that scene, but on the page itself. Now you gotta account for this new limitation when you add your next scene and the next scene afterwards, just like filmmakers have to adjust their shots to fit a chosen aspect ratio. On paper, this can result in one panel drawing more attention than others, naturally guiding our eyes and controlling the story's pace. We pick up the pace of reading knowing that something big is waiting, only to slow down at a key moment, the microclimax of every page induced by different square sizes. That's why nowadays you rarely see manga with long stretches of same size panels, or why you see the most detailed panels mainly on the corners of pages. Just like cinemas 21 by 9 mangas have massive wide shots that fill both pages, vertical panels that portray action and long and narrow still shots, and there are cool non-square panels that are cool. And everything I just said is about something we don't even notice. Pretty sick, isn't it? This is stupid. What? How can literal rectangles change how I perceive what I see? I'm sorry, this ain't no Minecraft and I'm no Steve to get emotional over squares. Let's take this panel from Fearn, for example. It captures this tender moment between Fern and Stark really well and I can't have that, so let's ruin it. Make the panel wider and you emphasize the setting's stillness. Narrow it and you own in on the action's dynamism. Expand it vertically and you make it feel grand, almost overwhelming. Split it into entirely and you shift focus from the handshake to the character's inner thoughts. This doesn't evoke the same emotions as this. Why? We change nothing about the setting or the characters or lighting, but the vibes change, man, the vibes! Well, change frames aspect ratio and you change the scene. We manipulate the negative space around the subject and I think that's what has such a strong effect on us. Look at the negative space as a landscape which it usually is. When it's wide, it's a vast land calling to be explored. When it's tall, it feels colossal towering over us. When there's very little of that space, we're forced to pay close attention to something so big and important that it blocks out the landscape completely. Is it starting to make sense? Kinda? A little bit? This is the reason I consider frames and panels the same thing. Both tools of visual storytelling. The only difference is that movies typically stand to one aspect ratio for their frames, unlike mangas, which switch panel sizes throughout each scene. So what happens when movies start to do what mangas and comics do? Hulk. You get Hulk. 
Okay, this is what happens when you ignore literally everything I just said about negative spaces and the thoughtfulness behind choosing good framing. What are these butt-ass transitions? Listen! As a goofy goober myself, I know the temptation to use PowerPoint transitions is real. You need to fight it. There is just way too much going on and it doesn't feel like producers try to direct our attention to a particular scene. That's not to say movies can do a manga. If you do it tastefully, you can make stuff like the Grand Budapest Hotel. It uses 4x3 and 16x9 and this watch movies for free aspect ratios to denote different time periods within the story. But if you really want to pay an homage to your inspirations and go in understanding what makes panels in manga work, you get something genuinely stellar. You get one of the most brilliant and fresh pieces of media ever. You get my personal favorite product of internet. You get Pudis and This is a show about two guys searching for some anime porn, by the way. It uses manga panels as composition guidelines for its shots. The aspect ratios change faster than the exchange rate of Turkish money. But it's always done with purpose. It always directs your attention to the character's actions. God, this goes harder than a brick wall. If you think about it, frames and their aspect ratios are just a limitation, really. A limitation of a 2D plane and what you can show in it. But that's why you can do so many crazy things with it. I think too often we forget that limitations aren't foes of creativity, but rather like guide rails that you hold on to. It might not be pleasant to always bump into them when you want to just beeline straight for that incredible masterpiece. But these guardrails let you make one small step towards that masterpiece at a time. Often, these limitations lead you to creating something amazing. Of course, I'm not trying to say that you can't create masterpieces without crazy panels or framing. Most great movies and shows were already shot in a set aspect ratio, but even with manga, I mean, hell, look at Free Run again. Most of it looks like someone left a Tetris match midway, yet it hits you like a loaded freight train from page one and keeps running you over with every chapter. Paneling and framing are completely different skills from storytelling, but in the rare cases they're used in creative ways, they can elevate the story from interesting to exhilarating both on film and on paper. Let's take a look at some of them. This panel is from a manga called Solo Leveling. And yes, this is a single continuous drawing done in everyone's beloved aspect ratio of 4 by 50. Or maybe let's take a look at manga like Dan to Dan with his dynamic shots, characters completely ignoring panel boundaries and items leaking over to other scenes. Or something like Made in Abyss with its charming hand-drawn panels and scenic wide shots that throw you right into the center of the action. But I've been saving up best for last, because if we want to talk about aspect ratios and storytelling, we have to talk about Witch Hat Atelier. Witch Hat Atelier is the first manga I've ever seen that understands that panels are just as integral to the world as what's within them. They get decorated with greenery, they can be circular with crazy ornamentations, they can be picture frames or huge religious tapestries, characters break out of and lean on them as if they're physical objects. The manga often uses the page itself as a bigger panel to make scenic shots with the rest of the layout. And of course, there are plenty of magical, jaw-dropping sceneries that reveal themselves with a page flip. There is something so genuinely whimsical in letting absolutely every element on every page draw you further into the story. Reading it fills you with a feeling of innocent curiosity and childlike wonder that I can't seem to find anywhere else. It's a masterclass in building worlds so inspiring they might just be some of the best medication against depression. This, this right here is the Pudis Engage of manga. But like it's about witches and not, you know, that. Searching for some anime. I'm sure if a game out which had Atelier came out and looked exactly like the manga, it would look stunning. It would also turn my life into story online for a month, but frankly, it wouldn't feel as magical as manga. Because to me, these panels are no longer just windows to watch fantasy characters be cool. They are portals between us and those who we aspire to become. And it is these portals that make Witch Hat Atelier feel so enchanting. Removing them would be like removing some of the soul of the art. Limitations help in the process of creation more than tools at hand. Okay, I know it sounds goofy at first, but I'm sure any fellow creator can relate. Maybe that limitation is a color palette, or a lack of budget, or a deadline, or maybe something as fundamental as a frame or a page. But when you create something, you see these limitations slowly transform from limitations to guide rails to a part of your creation. Aspect ratios are fascinating. 
They shape the way we perceive the stories without directly changing anything, but at the end of the day they're just ways to work around the limitation of a 2D world. And to me, it's kind of inspiring that some of my favorite works of art were made in spite of these limitations. Which I think says something about the state of the world and new technologies like generative AI. They promise to democratize art and generate any picture you want with a click of a button, but creating something meaningful was never about what you could make. It was always about what you couldn't make. It's in those limitations, in the imperfection, in the constant yearning to create a masterpiece that your art is born. Maybe not a masterpiece yet, but something genuine that we all lack so much. So if there's anything I learned from which had a silly era, aside from the kind of window frames I now want, it's this. Bad art is a step towards brilliant art. So if you're feeling the pressure, if you're worried that you're not making your best work, remember this. Creation isn't about perfection, it's about persistence. Learning and finding beauty in the process itself. Your masterpiece isn't waiting at the end of the road. It's in every imperfect stroke, every bad shot, every failed attempt, every moment you chose to keep creating despite having work or school and everything you make being a mess. Because if you keep going, you won't notice as you'll make your own Putus Engage or which had a tell you. But until then, we all just have to keep on making Hulk.